Okay. So uh, in previous lecture, we learned about uh, the segment, how to achieve the semantic segmentation. And also we uh, explain, I have explained how to achieve the image generation task. Okay. So if we use only the MSC rules, it's similar to, it is similar to uh, training the segmentation network but because the image space far wider than the, uh, I mean, the segmentation map space. So uh, we need additional loose functions whose name is adversarial rows. okay? So using both MSC rows and also the combination of the adversarial rows, we can get better performance in image generation task, okay? So, if we use only the MSC, the result seems uh, rather blurry, but uh, by using the adversarial loss, it tries to uh, deceive the adversarial network or the discriminator network. So by doing that, the quality of the output becomes better, okay? And uh, previously I missed these terms. So uh, some student asked after the class. So I think I have to maybe uh, explain this. So this P data is uh, meaning the distribution of the real data X. So this is meaning that X is sampled from the real data distribution and expectation is applied on this loss function. So expectation, you can uh, roughly think this is adding this term for every x, okay? So uh, this is meaning that you will use this loss, you will apply this loss for uh, x samples, sampled from the real data distribution, okay? So you will sum for every uh, real data uh, for this loss, okay? And also this is the uh, fake data distribution, the p, uh, X of Z, this is meaning the fake data distribution. So you will sample one Z from that distribution and you will apply this loss for that sample and will sum over every fake data, okay? So this is uh, representing the loss. I mean, uh, summing over the loss terms for every data, okay? Okay. And the next thing uh, we have to see is, uh, so, so far we learned about how to apply the deep learning networks for achieving the semantic segmentation. At the same time, uh, we can also see how we can apply it to generating the real world images, okay? And now uh, we will learn how we can achieve the post estimation task. So, uh, this is the RGB image capturing the human uh, pose, right? And also this is the uh, kind of the ground truth, ground truth of the pose output. So this uh, point and out, uh, lines are meaning the, uh, this point are meaning some uh, landmarks of the human body. So head, for example, the points are defined in the head location and some the hand location and some knee, foot, hip. And yeah, this kind of uh, key, key landmarks, uh, we define this kind of point. And our aim is to reconstruct the X and Y and sometimes Z coordinate of these landmarks, okay? So in the pose estimation task, we uh, normally denote pose estimation as the task to reconstruct these 3D locations of the key landmarks, okay? So uh, this number could be varied depending on the data set, but in this uh, sample, we define the 14 point in these locations. And our aim is to reconstruct it given only the RGB image, okay? So we can use uh, some pre-trained 
maybe imaging a pre-trained network, and we can change their final output to output uh, 14 joins XYZ coordinate, okay? And we can maybe apply, uh, supply the image and the, uh, the coordinate we made. This is kind of ground truth. And using the maybe MSC rules, we can train, we can further train this pre-trained network to make it work for this post estimation task, okay? This is not uh, that different from other application, right? Any questions here? No, okay. Yeah, this is uh, maybe uh, how to apply the loose function. So our uh, final loss might be the combination of the L2 loss between each landmark point, okay? So in this case, we can uh, use only the X and Y coordinate, okay? So, but um, this is the paper published in in maybe uh, 2015 or 2016. Um, yeah, this is one way to achieve the uh, post estimation task. So in this network, they directly output the X, Y coordinate. Okay, so the network, the neural network directly output the X and Y coordinate in this approach. But uh, it is known that in from this paper, it is known that uh, directly estimating this X and Y coordinate values is highly nonlinear. So uh, it is maybe hard for this neural network to understand this X and Y coordinate value from this uh, RGB image. Okay. Even humans cannot interpret this X and Y coordinate uh, directly, right? It, it may, uh, the relationship between this X and Y coordinate of the partial, uh, of the human part, are uh, not, um, I mean, uh, directly related to the image pixels itself. So uh, what they did, what authors of this paper uh, did is they made new representation for the pose output. So the new representation is this kind of heat map representation. So let's say this is the uh, W by H dimensional input RGB image, okay? So because it's RGB image, uh, it would have this dimensional output, uh, this dimensional array. Uh, but maybe we can uh, reduce the width and height by some ratio, but uh, rather than directly estimating the post, the, their coordinate value, uh, what they did here is they output the, this kind of H by H divided by D, this is the, uh, I mean, the rescaling ratio, like uh, one or maybe four. So we can, if this number D is four, then it means we will rescale this height and with this by, by dividing them by four, right? We, we can rescale it with the uh, constant ratio. Anyway, we will, our new output for this post estimation task would be some this dimensional heat map rather than the low coordinate vectors, okay? Anyway, the first thing uh, they changed was that, and also they um, made several iterative architecture uh, that estimate these heat maps multiple times. So in their architecture, they estimate heat maps uh, three times. Okay, they first uh, have the network to estimate heat maps from the original image X, and then they concatenate this heat map with the image feature and estimate the second heat map, and then again 
concatenate this heat map with the image feature and then estimate the third heat map, which should be the final output. Okay. So this is the uh, the architecture this paper is presenting. So if we uh, uh, if we implement this architecture uh, inside the PyTorch, then it could be like this. So uh, we have to make some class, okay, whose name is CPM to depose. So this this uh, the paper name is convolutional pose machine. So if you search for this paper, then you can see this kind of figure. Anyway, uh, what they did is they define multiple convolutional layers, okay? And also define max pooling and also the nonlinear layer. And what, what they implemented in the forward method is they input the image X and also apply multiple convolutional layers and regard some output as the image feature. This encoding is denoting the image feature. And this is the image feature. And this core map, uh, it, it also uh, transformed this encoding feature as uh, some intermediate output and also input it to the convolutional layer to output the first Hit map. This is denoting the first hit map. And then concatenating the uh, hit map, the first hit map and the image feature, it apply another convolutional layers to output the second hit map. And then again, concatenating the image feature and the second hit map, it apply another convolutional layers to output the final, the third heat map, okay? And in their training, they apply the L2 laws for ground truth heat map and this uh, first and second and third heat map using three L2 losses, okay? So anyway, they define this kind of architecture using the uh, PyTorch and apply loss functions like this. And they are insisting that thanks to this heat map representation and also the iterative uh, method, they could obtain better accuracy for this post estimation task. Okay. So anyway, you can see uh, using this class and this forward method, um, you can implement any kind of uh, big architectures simply okay okay so this is the uh, post estimation thing so any questions till now it's easy right so you can uh, by replacing uh, using this kind of thing and also the training code you can train any kind of network for any kind of applications easily And so, and also we will go to the next scene, the object detection pipeline, the second part. So um, maybe I'm assuming that maybe uh, last Wednesday, I uploaded the video, right? For these DTR things. So, we have learned that uh, there appears the uh, object detection pipeline whose name was uh, RCNN, right? They used the object proposal to make some initial bounding boxes and then apply the CNN multiple times, okay? And then the fast RCNN appears and then fast tall RCNN appears. So faster RCNN, that's the kind of the best performing CNN-based object detector. 
But uh, nowadays, the things are gradually changing. And nowadays, the CNN architectures are gradually transformed to the transformer architecture. So this is the first paper that applied the transformer architecture into the object detection task. Okay. And uh, in that video, uh, we reviewed how uh, the reviewed about the transform general transformer method, which was uh, used for the one-dimensional task such as NLP or speech recognition. But uh, this DTR architecture is uh, maybe the first transformer-based architecture which was applied to the 2D tasks, the image of the object detection task. So um, I will briefly review this transformer art-based object detector, the DTR. Okay. So they are in the transformer, it is normally composed of the two parts. The first part is encoder, uh, the second part is the decoder. Okay. Uh, what encoder does is it kind of enhances the initial image feature. Okay, so these image features are extracted by applying some ResNet or some uh, pre-trained CNN-based architecture. So from the low image, we first extract some image feature. And then uh, this is the attention mechanism uh, that densely, so image features are transformed into the a uh, key query value vector. So we apply for the image feature, we apply uh, this kind of weight to transform it. This is the image feature. So from the same image feature, we transform it into key query value by applying some linear layer. And this, uh, in this module, this is denoting the attention mechanism of the transformer. Uh, this is roughly uh, densely connecting these key query values. The operation is densely applies some dot product between this K, Q, V. But you can uh, just think now, this is some differentiable operation, which is effective, okay? Anyway, we apply some differentiable operation. And also this FFN is the, also the similar to the MLP or the linear operation, okay? This is also the normalization part. So anyways, we apply multiple differentiable layers, including the attention mechanism. We first, within the encoder, we first enhance the image feature. Okay, so at the end of the encoder, we can get uh, enhanced image feature, okay? And also in this part, this part is uh, denoting the decoder layer of the transformer. Uh, originally in the transformer, these part are sequentially inputted when dealing with the MLP tasks. So transformer was used for maybe uh, translating the languages, okay? The encoder is uh, calculated in the parallel way because we are uh, somehow given the input signal even for the NLP, okay? So we somehow enhance the input feature from the encoder but what happened in the decoder is we one by one uh, input the, the first word of the uh, different language and also we uh, input the first word of the input, okay? And then anyway, uh, in, in NLP domain, this decoder part is uh, operated in the sequential manner but uh, in the image domain, we do not have to do that because um, 
we are not translating the uh, sequential languages, okay? So you can forget about the sequential things here. But uh, one thing is uh, this object queries uh, in, object, uh, in object detection task, this object queries is not having uh, that semantic meaning yet, okay? There's no semantic meaning. But um, they are learnable parameters. I mean, uh, they are randomly initialized during the training and they are updated during the training, getting the gradient from the loss function, okay? But they don't have any semantic meaning in the uh, image domain, okay? Anyways, uh, these random queries are applied with the self attention again so they are they they are transformed into the key key query values using another this weight vector and they are applied with the uh, self attention mechanism and have another differentiable layer and the highlight of the uh, mechanism in happen in this decoder is this part. So this part is often called as cross attention. So this was called as self attention, right? This part and also uh, this part are called as self attention because all of the key query values are key query values are generated from the image input feature, right? By applying different weight, they are mapped to different vectors, right? And the attention is applied to that signals, okay? Which are from the same signal, right? Key query values are initially from the same signal in this mechanism, and also here, the key query values are also from the same signal, which is the object queries, right? But uh, in this part, the cross attention part, this part, um, you can see uh, the value and key are from the encoder output, right? And also this part, the queries are from the, uh, the output of the self-attention on the object queries, right? So in this part, the query and key values are from the different signals, right? So two are from the this encoder output and one is from the uh, the previous layers. And anyway, we apply the same attention mechanism using uh, regarding uh, using these key query values, which are from the different signal and map it to eventually to the uh, object class and the bounding bounds coordinate, okay? So this is the DTR I would, so, here, uh, the image features are encoded, and somehow here, the object queries are uh, some random vector which uh, is initialized to achieve good output, okay? So in conventional DTR, these object queries are learned during the training to get uh, most accurate output, right? But uh, this learned, uh, values are not having much semantic uh, meaning, okay? And another thing is, these object queries are having, uh, this is uh, composed of multiple vectors, and normally uh, these vectors are around this uh, initialized to have this, this amount of number. So there are 300, around 300 
uh, object queries here, or, and each object query is some vector, okay? And each object queries are mapped to each uh, output, okay? So this each object queries are mapped to some class and some specific bounding box locations, okay? And because of that, this three, depending on the 300, this number of object queries are uh, kind of uh, bounding the number of bounding boxes in the uh, image, okay? So, I mean, we cannot uh, detect more than these 300 boxes from the image. Okay, if the three hundred, uh, if the number of queries are set as three hundred, then we cannot get more than three hundred bounding boxes from the image. Okay, but normally, uh, from the one image, uh, we are assuming that maybe there are less number of uh, objects. I I mean, oh, there would be objects less than uh, three hundred. So normally, we set this as three hundred, but we can change this as well. Okay, so this is the deformable detail architecture and maybe uh, you can review our previous Wednesday's class uh, for more details, okay? Uh, but DTR uh, have multiple uh, limitations, okay? So first of all, uh, it is hard to train. So it takes some time to train this DTR architecture. So transformer, uh, it is uh, their attention mechanism requires quadratic com computation. So it's kind of applying this dot product between the input signal uh, in the dense way. So if there are uh, n number of key and n number of queries, then there should need n square number of dot product. Okay. So the complexity is quadratic. Okay, so because of that, the training takes a lot of time and it also exhibits the slow convergence. Okay, and yeah, it, it uh, may be uh, 10 or 20 times slower compared to the fast RCNN, which is based on the CNN architecture. Okay, so the first problem is it is hard to train. It takes a lot of time to train DTR, okay? And also another thing is uh, DTR, the conventional DTR, uh, it is hard to capture the small object, okay? Um, so this is because uh, we use one, uh, the image features as input, which is encoded in, uh, in just one resolution, okay? So we mostly apply from the image input X, we apply the ResNet, ResNet maybe 15, or sometimes we uh, use different things to obtain this image feature and get the enhanced image feature using the encoder. But um, because of that, uh, this, because ResNet is not effectively capturing the small object inside the image, uh, because of this, uh, the small objects are often missing in the DTR, okay? So uh, we may require to involve the multi-scale image encoder, okay? But uh, if we apply, if we use multi-scale encoder, uh, DTR training might be becoming more slow, right? So already it takes huge complexity for one scale, but if we involve more scales, it may take more time, okay? It's it already takes uh, 10 to 20 times slow, uh, uh, more times compared to the first RCNN, but if we involve three scales maybe to, to capture the multiple scales, uh, it may take uh, like three, 30 to 16 times uh, during the training, okay? So this is the uh, another problem in DTR. So to, to solve this kind of uh, limitation of the DTR architecture, 
the deformable DTL was appeared. So they proposed the deformable attention mechanism to relieve the heavy complexity and the slow convergence of the uh, original DTL architecture. And at the same time, uh, by relieving the complexities in attention mechanism, they could uh, use multiple scale encoders. Okay? So this is the architecture of the deformable DTR. So you can see their image encoder is having the three scales. Okay? And they uh, had a slightly different attention mechanism. Uh, they are composed of both encoder and the decoder, right? And they are using also the object queries and also image features as input to encoder and decoder respectively. But uh, their detailed uh, mechanism becomes different from the original DTR. And that, uh, because of that, thanks to that, they can secure the real, uh, I mean, not real time, but a uh, better complexity. So yeah, this is the uh, deformable DTR. And also uh, another thing is, another issue in DTR is, as I mentioned to you, the object queries in DTR, which is the input to the decoder, this part is not having semantic meaning, okay? So because of that, Another stream of works are proposed, the conditional DTR and other stream of the DTR works are proposed to give some of the spatial information into the object queries, okay? And thanks to that kind of approach, uh, the DTR, uh, their performance becomes more optimal, okay? So there are several works for that. And also there are another work uh, for accelerating the speed of the DTR training, which is the called as D and DTR. And nowadays uh, people are using DNO. This is uh, published in ICRI 20, 2023. And this is based on the DTR, but have more schemes compared to the conventional DTR. And nowadays uh, people are using this as the state of the art object detector. Okay, so maybe uh, from next class, I will uh, review this part, okay? Uh, I will explain this deformable and the uh, conditional DTR and the depth DTR and the DN DTR and the DNO, okay? From next class, we will do that. And also after this, uh, we will also see the real-time object detection pipeline, such as the YOLO, so maybe some of you are already familiar with your role, okay? So till now, we uh, somehow improved the conventional DTR's uh, speed. The com we, we somehow reduced the complexity of attention mechanism. And by doing that, we reduced the complexity of the DTR, but it's still not the real type. But your law is proposed uh, to achieving the object detection task in real time way. So we will first learn about the YOLO and there appeared RTDTR, the real time DTR. So nowadays our DTR is also tuned to achieve the object detection in the real time way. So maybe next week, uh, we will uh, review this part, DN, uh, but, uh, I mean, several DTR variants. And also after that, we will see the real-time object detection pipelines, okay? Okay, so, I mean, this is a bit early, but uh, we will uh, finish uh, today's lecture here and uh, let's see next week, okay? Thank you.